you stated that China respects the territorial integrity, the sovereignty of Ukraine. If I remember correctly, you said just like we respect the territorial integrity of any other member state of the United Nations. Now, that was a remark made four days before the outbreak of the current war of aggression. And my very simple question to you is, now that we have had for 12 months this ongoing war, is China prepared to act on its position that it respects the territorial integrity? And if you are prepared to act, what are you prepared to do? You spoke in your remarks of your willingness to participate in the reflection of how to bring about peace. So could you elaborate a little bit on that? Thank you. We do not want to see a crisis, the crisis in Ukraine. And we are deeply concerned by the expanded and extended crisis. We are not a party directly concerned, but we do not sit idly by. We do not add fuel to the fire, and we are against reaping benefits from this crisis. What we have been doing is to facilitate peace talks. We will stand on the side of peace and dialogue. As a matter of fact, since the second day of the crisis, on the 25th of February, President Xi Jinping suggested that Russia and Ukraine sit down together and talk to each other to seek political settlement of the crisis. In Belarus, in Turkey, there were multiple rounds of peace talks. And we saw a framework text on the peaceful resolution of the crisis. However, that was stopped. We did not know why the process was cut short. Some forces might not want to see peace talks to materialize. They don't care about the life and death of Ukrainians, not the harms on Europe. They might have strategic goals larger than Ukraine itself. This warfare must not continue. During his meeting with European leaders, President Xi Jinping said clearly that conflicts and wars produce no winner. Complicated issues cannot be solved by simple, simple solutions. Major country confrontation must be averted. We can state our positions on this stage, but at the same time, we need to think calmly, especially our friends in Europe, about what efforts should be made to stop the warfare, what framework should there be to bring lasting peace to Europe, what role should Europe play to manifest its strategic autonomy. The more difficult situation is we cannot abandon efforts to seek peace. We are approaching the one-year anniversary. China will put forth a position paper on the political settlement of the Ukraine issue. We will reiterate the propositions made by President Xi Jinping in our position paper, including that territorial integrity and sovereignty must be respected, 
purposes and principles of the UN Charter be observed, legitimate security concerns be taken seriously, and all efforts conducive to the peaceful settlement of the crisis be supported. We will also reiterate that nuclear wars must not be fought and will not be won. We must oppose such an incident. We will call on efforts to oppose attacks on nuclear power stations and nuclear facilities for peaceful use in order to prevent nuclear catastrophe. We must jointly oppose the use of chemical and biological weapons under any circumstances. Our efforts to promote peace will continue. Put simply, we will work with all sides, sustain our efforts, and work until the day peace arrives. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I have collected a couple of questions. We have very limited time, but among the questions most urgently asked are questions about the relationship between China and the United States. We have all recently witnessed the, what I may call, with your permission, the balloon crisis. Um, and uh, my question is a very simple one. Um, are you going to, and is your delegation, going to use the opportunity of this Munich Security Conference platform, which is actually an ideal platform for these types of purposes, to enter into a discussion with those present from the uh, Joe Biden administration um, to return, hopefully, to a somewhat more normal level of discourse between Beijing and Washington, because, of course, you have some larger issues to discuss uh, above and beyond the balloon crisis. But my impression has been that the balloon crisis has stood in the way of returning to a more normal discussion. Please. Uh, it seems that everyone is following very closely the balloon incident and has become a, the center of heated discussions. I'll talk about some facts. We have very clearly told the United States this is an unmanned airship that is civilian in nature. It has limited self-steering capability and veered off course into the United States due to westerly influence. We asked the United States to handle it calmly and professionally based on consultation with the Chinese side. Regrettably, the United States disregards these facts and use advanced fighter jets and downed a balloon with its missiles. This is, I would say, absurd and hysterical. This is a 100% abuse of the use of force. It is a violation of international customary practice in particular, the Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation, we do not accept this. We have launched a march against the United States. Across the globe, there are many balloons in the sky from different countries. Do you want to down each and every one of them? It does not show America is strong. On the contrary, it shows the opposite. We urge the United States not to do such preposterous things simply to divert attention from its domestic problems. We also urge the United States to be more sincere rectifying its wrong approach 
and undo the negative impact such measures have on China-U.S. relations. Why such sensation? The basic context is misperception of the United States and a strategic miscalculation on the part of the U.S. China's position to the United States is clear and transparent. Mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. These are the principles, the three principles on how we get along with the United States, how two major countries with different systems can get along with each other in the world. What response do we get? The response from the U.S. side is that the U.S. says China is a serious geopolitical challenge, a long-term competitor, and a threat to the United States. This, I would say, is a misguided China perception. With this perception, the United States is using all of its means to clamp down and smear China and is co-opting other countries to do the same. China said or stated that it wants to compete with China. We are not afraid of competition, but we want fair and rules-based competition. The United States is not doing it. For instance, the CHIPS Act. This act is 100% protectionism, 100% selfishness, 100% unilateral action. It is in serious violation of the principle of free trade, the rules of WTO. This, by no means, is fair competition. It cannot be farther away from free competition. The U.S. is standing on the opposite side of free trade that has long espoused. This is pretty ironic. In ancient China, we Chinese often say that even if people love benefits, they get it through fair means. Only people with selfish purposes will only get it with this extortion. The United States has only been extorting benefits. We do hope that the U.S. side can view China's development objectively, impartially. Modernization of 1.4 billion people marks progress of humanity. I don't understand why the U.S. is stopping this process. We hope the U.S. side would take a pragmatic and proactive to attitude toward China and work together with China to return our bilateral ties to a, to a track of sound development. This not only meets the benefit of our two countries, but also of the international community. Thank you. Uh, the team signals to me that our time is already up. But uh, I, I don't think, sir, that this uh, discussion would be uh, uh, complete if we didn't have at least one final minute, we don't have more time than that, for you to reassure this audience that a military escalation over the Taiwan issue is not imminent. I will briefly assure the audience that Taiwan is part of Chinese territory. It, is never, it has never been a country, and it will not be a country in the future. This is the status quo of the Taiwan question. It is not China who wants to change the status quo, but Taiwan separatist forces on the island. Taiwan independence forces undermines peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. That is why we must oppose Taiwan independence and Taiwan separatism. We must observe one China principle. 
This is also a consensus of the international community. We reiterate the importance of respecting sovereignty and territorial integrity. This is good. We hope that on China, sovereignty and territorial integrity should also be respected because Taiwan separatist forces are threatening our sovereignty and territorial integrity. We don't hope to see double standards on this issue of major significance. That is my answer. Thank you. Real privilege to have you on stage here again. Do come again next year if you can. Thank you.